Rub up your engines! Are you looking for a new pickup truck, but you can't stand the price? You can win one if you want. The Tennessee Wildlife Resources Foundation is having a raffle, and you can win $50,000 worth of Ford. You don't necessarily have to get a truck, but hey, it's Tennessee. You're probably going to win a truck. I like supporting good causes, and there's nothing like Wildlife Foundation. Now, the tickets are only 20 bucks a piece. They got deals if you buy more, you get a discount. You can win $50,000 worth of Ford. You can win a nice bass boat. They got all kinds of prizes just check out their website where you can get the tickets and you can see everything that they have hey i'm gonna buy some tickets just for fun i don't even care if i win i really got all these vehicles there but it's supporting a good cause and you might win a nice prize too so hey nobody's losing here well, let's get into analysis of this brand new 2021 ford F-150 King Ranch. It's a beautiful red. There's no arguing that. And being the King Ranch, it's got the cool generator here too. Built-in generator. Beautiful bed liner. Pirelli tires. Fancy wheels. It's King Ranch. It's got the old step in and beautiful seats. These leather seats are beautiful. You got a lot of leg room. I'm no tiny tot and there's still a lot of room back here. It's the limo pickup trucks. There's your AC. Even has heated rear seats. And a pickup truck with a moonroof. What will they think of now? But let's get to the nitty gritty and look under the hood. When I think about those V6 EcoBoosts with turbos and GDIs. This is a V8 engine. What these F-150s were made for. Now, if you've been watching me any length of time, you know I'm mad at Toyota. They took their V8 engine out of the new Tundras. They're not putting them in. Ford isn't stupid. You can get a V8 engine in this F-150. That's what they're known for. I don't like the V6s, the EcoBoost. I don't like that system. This is a regular V8 engine. They can last a really long time, have plenty of power for pulling stuff, towing stuff, and you don't have to worry about the turbos wearing out when they get 100,000 miles on them. Now, it's not just plain Jane. These have very well-designed heads on them, and as you can see, for a modern vehicle, there's still quite a bit of working room on these. It's not all hidden in the back where you can't touch anything. Now, of course, it's got modern technology. It's got the louvers inside here for better gas mileage, but still efficient enough cooling. All kinds of electronic controls, electronic power steering, but at least there's the spark plugs under the coil. They're easy to get to. You don't need to change them. Look, all you got to do is take off this stupid foam beauty cover. There they are. They're not hard to access. This isn't one of their older designs where on a VH you had to take the stupid fuel injection system off to get to the spark plugs. These are easy to do. When they finally wear out, you can easily change them yourself. And this is a King Ranch, so of course, four-wheel drive. You got your front drive train and the big old rear end. If you notice, this one was well built. I see no surface rust on any of this. This is a clean new truck. Okay, as you can see, they did it right in Dearborn, Michigan. Although I find this hilarious now. It's 55% U.S. Canadian parts. Mexico, 15. Well, that's 70. I don't know where the other 30% comes from. But enough talk. Let's take it for a spin. So we're inside. But where's the shifter? It's down here. Oh, look. You got to push a button. Up it comes. It's Space A. Get ready for takeoff. Four, three, two, one. Blast off. Got the old backup camera. It's got the really nice modern one. Both sides. And I've got a really tight piece of concrete here. So... Boy, my wife would love this. She can see we're going right by it, and we're not gonna run into it. I've had so many people knock off the lion. You can see the lion has a few chips on it from people knocking them off. That's fantastic, I do say. These modern things come in really handy. First thing you notice, it's an F-150, so it's high up in the air, very smooth, and for a pickup truck, this thing is quiet. I do have to say, Ford's been perfecting the suspension systems on these things for decades. They really have a much improved ride. My wife hates riding in pickup trucks. She rides in these, she loves them. She said it doesn't ride like a pickup truck. That's just their junk rolling to the side, the guys that delivered it. <laughs> it's none of my stuff, my phone's still in my pocket. For towing and braking and regular accessories, 120 here, 12 volt there. It has all the trailer and towing adjustments you wanna mess around with and the drive mode. Too high, four high, four low. Now, thanks to Ford's innovative use of aluminum, these things weigh a lot less than they used to. So, you got a big truck with a big V8 engine, but it weighs less. So consequently, it gets better gas mileage too, but let's see how it takes off. We'll come to a stop, and we'll Ford. You can hear that engine going. No 
my smooth shifts. Certainly got power. You going 60? You want to pass somebody? Here we go. You can pass people. No problems at all. Great for riding in the country or actually riding in the fields if you want. It is four wheel drive. You got enough horsepower to get in and out of trouble and you got enough height to not get stuck. It does have that great V8 sound. And of course, as I said earlier, this is a Ford F-150 built in Michigan. This thing is made in Mexico, it's made in Michigan. Nobody's gonna whine about a truck with a pickup like this. This truck has enough old school in it to make me happy with the V8. Poo poo on Toyota for going to the sixes. You want a pickup truck, you want a V8. If you want to try to win one, I'm all for helping out any good foundation. And this is for Tennessee Wildlife. Check it out. You can buy tickets there online. You can win 50,000 bucks worth of Ford. You can win a nice bass boat. And it includes the motor and trailer too. You're not just got in the hall, you know? Now I like it in Tennessee. Now maybe they won't throw me out if I'm helping them up here. <laughs> <laughs> and here's some bonus questions and answers. New Car One says, I'm getting my first new car and I don't know what to get. I got three options. A Chevy Spark 2020, a Shangan L7 2021, or a Mitsubishi Mirage 2020. Okay, out of those cars, I'd say get the Mitsubishi Mirage. I'm not that big of a Mitsubishi fan, but the Chevy Sparks are pieces of junk. And the Chinese cars, uh, I don't know yet. You know, they haven't been out long enough in our market to see whether the things are going to last or not. But the Mitsubishi Mirage, they're not great cars cars, but they're not horrible cars, and they're better made than they used to be. That would be the best out of the three that you picked. Not senile, says, is a dealer line. I got a 2021 Honda CRV with less than 20,000 miles on the odometer with the 1.5 turbo. I checked the dipstick and the oil looked good, but I wiped it. I found black residue on my paper towel. I checked. I changed the oil and filtered myself a day later at 1,066 miles. The oil came out was so black when I put it in a mason jar, I couldn't see through it. The service manager told me that was normal. Is he lying? No, that's it's not normal. Obviously, you said you changed it at 1,066 miles. It should not be that dirty. That was the first oil change. Maybe when they built it, some dirt or something was left in it. I would say change it again. Put in that new GF6 oil that's made for those cars. Then drive it 1,000 miles and see what happens when you change the oil. You should only have to change it every five, 6,000 miles, but change it again. If it is black again, I would make a stink with Honda because there's no way it should be that dirty that fast. And of course, they always say, and it's normal. This No, it isn't. It doesn't get dirty that fast. And you know, they had problems with oil dilution with the early ones that were the 1.5 turbos. Maybe the new ones have a problem too. We'll find out as time goes on. If I see it in other people, I'll tell you about it. Anybody out there has the same problem, tell me so I can pass it on. Johnny ETX says, dealership wants to flush my transmission fluid. I got a Tacoma with 60,000 miles. They want to do a transmission flush, not just a fluid change. What do you think? Don't let them flush it. The Toyotas are fine. Just drain and fill. Drain and fill. If it's got a filter, drop the pan and change the filter too. But they that's it. They don't need flushing. They're well made. Flushing often creates problems. Now, they're just telling you that because it's an expensive procedure. You got to waste a lot of fluid, takes time. They're going to charge you a whole bunch of money. They're just ripping you off. They're not a do it yourself. Watch my videos. It's not that hard to do. And the Toyotas run so clean, anyways, you'll probably find it's not even dirty, but it's a good idea every 60,000 to just change the fluid. And if it's got a filter, change the fluid too, but do not flush. That's just a scam. They're trying to make money off of you. Trippy says, My right blinker stays on when it's screwed in all the way. I got an 05 Mercedes. Ben C230. The right blinker, when screwed in, stays lit unless I unscrew it. Using a turn signal doesn't make any difference. What's wrong? All right, you got to short the power. Power is going to that blinker light no matter what you do. Look around that area where the socket is. Pray you see a wire that's frayed that got hit by golf clubs or something and then it's shorting out and you're giving it power the whole time. But that is a Mercedes Benz. Realize that Mercedes Benz, some of them have as many as 95 separate computer modules. Even the stinking turn signal system on your Mercedes is run by computers. It could very well be a short and a computer driver circuit and you'll have to change one of the modules. They are just rat's nests to work on those Mercedes. With all those computer modules, anything goes wrong with them. You get in a little wreck and something gets bent and the wire gets shorted. It'll short out the computer and all kinds of weird stuff can go. And they have so many different computers make your head spin. Plus, whenever you put a new computer module in, then it has to be reprogrammed. They deliberately do that so that you have to go to a Mercedes place so they can just screw you over while you're fixing your light bulbs that screw in. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.